Hi, my name is Angela Harwood, and today I will be talking about single elder congregationalism. Church government is a branch of ecclesiology that addresses the organizational structure and hierarchy of the church. Maybe you have questioned the various forms of church polity and you've asked yourself, what is the best way to lead a church? How should our churches be governed? Who has the authority to lead a congregation? And what is the best way to accomplish the Great Commission and grow a healthy church? These are great questions, and the answers are so important because the church is not man's idea, because it has been God's plan all along. It has been said by George Ladd, it appears that there was no normative pattern of the church government in the apostolic age and that the organizational structure of the church is not an essential element in theology of the church. Even though there isn't a precise manual on church government about how the churches in the New Testament functioned with a step-by-step -step manual, or how modern churches should govern their local congregations, it is still extremely important for a church to have a systematic approach concerning church polity. In fact, it is very possible that church government is not highly developed in the New Testament due to the birthing of the church in the book of Acts. In broad terms, there are three forms of church government, Episcopal, Presbyterian, and Congregational. Congregational, it kind of merges into two uh, there are a variety of permutations, and these terms are single elder or plural elder leadership. It is interesting how the church mirrors their government. The Romans ceased to be a republic and became an empire under Caesar. The church copied that and we seem a form of a pope, which is the form of Caesar in the Catholic Church. The Episcopal Church runs this way also the Church of England and some Orthodox church churches. And these churches can be referred to as a monarchy, where you have a vicar of Christ in the form of a pope at the top, and one man is in rule. The Presb Presbyterians have a plurality of dictators telling everyone what to do. This is a representative form of government, where the elders represent the church in the meetings and sessions. This is like an aristocracy or an oligarchy, where all the elders make decisions. Other churches hold to a congregational rule. This became popular in America because of the, it's the land of democracy and individualism. Each system has positive and commendable features highlighting particular characteristics in scripture, but there can only be one front runner. And regardless of their respective positions of Episcopal, Presbyterian, and Plural Elder, there is only one prominent form of church government, and that is the one led by a single elder. I will first explain congregationalism, and then I will mer merge into the importance of a single elder, or what we refer to commonly as a senior pastor. Daniel Aiken states, Congregationalism locates the authority of the church in each local body of believers. No person or organization is above or over it except the Lord Jesus Christ. Each and every member of the church has equal rights and responsibilities. It's taught all throughout the, the New Testament. First Timothy chapter two and verse five states that there is one mediator between God and mankind, and that is the man Christ Jesus. Every believer has an instant access before the throne of God, po pointing us toward a congregational form of government. We don't have to go to any particular person to talk with God. All we have to do is just pray to him and we can have that instant access. The book of Acts and the Pauline epistles support a congregational understanding of church government and polity. The majority of New Testament letters are written to church congregations not a bishop or elder or group of elders or deacons. Paul writes to the church, even in the book of Revelation, it is written to the churches. 
Because each member can come be boldly before the throne of grace and are considered a believer priest, each member has the responsibility to their local church. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18 states, Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme, and over all who rise from the dead. He is first in everything. Because the church is the body of Christ, it causes an interrelatedness that is that interconnects us with one another. The book of Galatians clearly admonishes the church to bear one another's burdens because we are only as strong as our weakest link. Therefore, we need to encourage one another. You need to encourage me and I need to encourage you. Daniel Aiken again focuses on the church in Corinth that struggled with the proper decorum in worship. Paul in his epistle does not instruct leadership but he instructs the entire congregation saying, if anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things which I write to you, which are the commandments of the Lord. If anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. This is the purpose of church leadership and government. It's to keep things decent and in order. Single elder congregationalism is an independent form of church government, meaning that the local church under the authority of Christ governs itself. The government of Christ must begin with the Lord and his kingdom authority because he is the head of the church. He's the head of all principality and power. This biblical form of church government encourages the church to be overseen by an elder or senior pastor who has been chosen by a congregation and clearly distinguished as its spiritual leader. The term elder in the Old Testament means to be old or to grow old, and it's often referred to prominent leader in the community. We can think of Moses being the leader over an entire nation, or then Joshua, they were prominent leaders over their, their people. The term elder appears more than 180 times in the Old Testament, one-third referring to an elder and two-thirds referring to a leader. In the New Testament, the terms elder and overseer are used interchangeably. So what are the qualifications of an elder? The most important qualification for church leadership is spiritual integrity and a man who is biblically qualified. God is most concerned with character of those who lead his church. It is important to focus on the fact that you cannot validate a man's walk with God by the fruit of his giftings. Yes, an individual may have many talents and giftings and may have an anointing on his life and perform many miracles, but that does not qualify them for the ministry of an elder over a congregation. In 1 Timothy, Paul addresses several issues related to elders, which include they need to be honorable and have financial support. They need to be set apart for service to the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 3 makes reference to the elders, and 1 Timothy chapter 5 references the overseers. And as I stated before, these two terms are interchangeable and do not refer to two separate offices. The church is not like the kingdoms of this world. Instead, Christianity promotes leaders to be servants. A single elder or senior pastor is called to be a shepherd. A good shepherd leads his sheep to ample water and food, protects his flock from predators, and allows his flock to grow. A good shepherd also comforts his sheep, and if they are hurt, he tends to their wounds. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 14, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he's a hireling and does not care about the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. And I know my sheep and I am known by my own. 
Jesus is our shepherd, and he has appointed single elders to emulate his love for the church by feeding the flock with those words of life and giving them rivers of living water to drink from. There are modern-day wolves who will oppose biblical-based teaching by infiltrating their strong opinions of contemporary legalism. A single elder needs to combat the pernicious doctrines of false teachers that spread and in injuring believers by causing confusion and perverting the gospel. The single elder also has a great calling upon his life to fulfill the Great Commission by imparting a vision that encourages evangelism and missions. One of the greatest advan advantages of a single elder form of church government is unified vision. If an organization does not have vision, it will be counterintuitive and contradicting. And the Bible states, if there is a lack of vision or no vision, then the people will perish. As an example, think of the way that Martin Luther King Jr. communicated his vision during the Civil Rights Movement. In the summer of 1963, 250,000 people showed up to hear Dr. King speak. What made him so special? There were other orators in the world who were speaking out during the Civil Rights Movement, but people were not listening to their ideas. Why? One of the main things Dr. Luther did was he... He cast a vision. He passionately proclaimed, I have a dream. He didn't say, I have a plan, or this is what needs to change, and this is what needs to change. He was a visionary. He cast a vision. So leaders, they might hold a position of power, but those who lead will inspire people to change, will inspire people to pursue God. A single elder has the capability of personifying the vision for one church or community. He can personify this vision by inspiring people to change and, and follow Christ. Therefore, an effective single elder can effectively communicate to a movement better than a group leadership because there is a clear vision cast without any kind of confusion. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1-3 through three states, The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for fil filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but by being examples to the flock. So in these scriptures, again, a shepherd is interchangeable with the word elder, elder with a pastor and overseer. So leaders in the New Testament, they lead by example, and their authority is to persuade people with the truth. During the Last Supper, the disciples get into dispute with who would be the greatest. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 22. And we're going to start reading at verse 24 to 27. It says, And there was also strife among them, which of them should be accounted to the greatest. And he said unto them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they exercise authority upon them that are benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is it not he that sitteth at meat, but I among you which serveth. So the disciples in this portion of scripture, they were disputing with one another because they wanted to know who was going to be the greatest. And Jesus said, to be great, you have to become a servant. I think we can learn a lot about church government with these scriptures. Jesus said, you are called to be different. You will not be like the Gentiles, ruling over your congregations and forcing them to do whatever you want them to do. You will be their servants. Governments in a nation have the authority to force people to do things that they may not want to do. 
Church government cannot emulate national governments in this way. That's why there should not be one person with all of the power. History proves with the Hitlers of this world that this is a very dangerous place and way to lead. Jesus said the Gentiles exercise authority over their subjects. The church is not there to boss people around and to dominate over someone. The church is instructed to be better and to do better. Jesus said himself, answering unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. So we might not be able to follow everything the government desires of us, because it might go against biblical teaching, but the church cannot emulate that kind of uh, superiority and that kind of dominion over their congregations. In conclusion, the church is not supposed to be legislative, inventing new things beyond the Bible. The church is judicial, however, in the sense that it decides on the correct interpretation of, <clears throat> of scripture. The church is not designed to be an empire with one man ruling or an aristocracy with a plurality of dictators. This is why single elder congregationalism in the Bible is the only way to lead, because it is an independent form of church government who operates under the authority of Christ, governing themselves after the pattern of Jesus and not after the pattern of this world.